What's up everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. I'm Ryan Beach and in today's video we're gonna be talking about some common pitfalls that people fall into when sending in audition tapes for whatever ensemble that they wanna audition for. I'm sure many of us are familiar that a common step in the audition process can be that we need to uh, send in an audition tape. We have maybe a list of three to six excerpts and we need to record them, put our best foot forward, send it away so people can listen to it and then they decide if we're going to advance to the next round or not. Some of you may have have even had experience with making audition tapes yourself. One of the problems that we can experience when sending in a tape is there are just, like I said, these pitfalls that we can fall into and they really just hinder our ability to have a chance at advancing to the next round. I'm excited to team up with Ryan Brewer and Kevin Paul from Military Trumpet Jobs. Together, we're gonna to be talking about 11 common pitfalls that people fall into when they make their audition tapes. I got this list straight from Ryan and Kevin. They have listened to hundreds of tapes that people have sent in for the United States Army Band at Pershing's own, and they wanted to collaborate with me to create a resource that they can share these kinds of ideas so you can understand that. I'm also gonna do my best to demonstrate some of these pitfalls so that you can kind of see what it looks like in real time as well. The 11 pitfalls are gonna be split up into three different categories. One are trumpet related pitfalls, two are musical related pitfalls, and three are audio related pitfalls. And then we're gonna come back after that and there's a fourth category of professional pitfalls and we're just gonna hear a conversation that Kevin and Ryan and I had on a podcast episode that was released recently. And you'll hear what they have to say about how some of these professional things can hinder us as well. The first pitfall we're gonna cover is that our sound lacks depth or resonance. All this really means is we don't have a full bodied, beautiful trumpet sound that we're putting forth on the recording. Here's an example of that from the Ives Variations on America. The next pitfall we might fall into is that we would have unclear or incorrect articulation. What we mean by this is that your articulation doesn't necessarily have a clear ping on the front of it, or maybe in terms of incorrect articulation, you've chosen the wrong style to play in, or maybe you're just not playing the articulation that's printed on the page. The example I'll give here is again from the Ives, instead of playing nice and staccato like it's written, I chose to play a little bit more legato. This is something you would not want to do because it does not demonstrate the right style and the right articulation. The third pitfall we might fall into is having poor intonation. I think this is pretty self-explanatory, so we're just gonna get straight to the example. I'm gonna use the lyric solo from Copeland's Outdoor Overture to demonstrate this. And the fourth and final pitfall we might run into in the trumpet related category is technical mistakes. This could be something like leaving in wrong notes in the recording or you just really messed up a technical part of it really badly or maybe you've left too many missed notes in there and it seems to become a pattern. These kinds of things can really be a detriment to the overall presentation. Here's an example from Ives. Moving on to the musical category, the first pitfall you might run into here is that your music making is just boring. It's kind of a blunt way to describe it, but I think we all know what I'm talking about. Here's an example from the Copeland. The next pitfall you might run into in the musical category is having a vertical approach to your playing. By vertical approach, all we mean is that it sounds hard or it sounds very note to note instead of being horizontal, which has sort of this freedom and that the line is moving forward and it feels like it's something we can easily follow. Here's an example from the Ives.
And the third and final pitfall we might run into on the musical side of things is questionable musical choices. This is gonna be similar to the articulation discussion where maybe we choose the wrong style to play in or maybe we do weird and funny things with the rhythm or with the time as I'm gonna demonstrate here with the Ives excerpt. Moving on to the audio category, these first two are actually gonna be very related to each other. The first pitfall you might run into is choosing the wrong room to record in. And the second one is you have placed the mic in the wrong spot or you even chose the wrong microphone. Generally speaking, for the room we record in, we don't want it to be too live and we don't want it to be too dry. If you have access to a hall that you can get into that has medium reverberance, you're gonna get a nice blend of being able to have some of the beauty of the room but still have clarity in your trumpet playing. Where you place the mic and the type of microphone you choose will also affect how your sound is perceived on the recording as well. One of the mistakes I've personally made in my tape making journey is that I would get into a very reverberant room and then put the microphone as far away as possible thinking that's going to be the most beautiful presentation and it sounds something like this. As you can hear, there's pretty much no clarity at all, and you can't really tell anything about me as a player whatsoever. The opposite end of the spectrum is that the microphone would be too close to you, and if this is something that you've done in the past, you know that it can be pretty easy to peak the microphone and just kind of sound very aggressive and harsh, something like this. <laughs> In terms of microphone selection, we don't have time to get into all the nuances of what's the best microphone for the price point. So a general recommendation would be if you're gonna record in a room, try to find a really nice condenser microphone. And if you're gonna record yourself in a drier, smaller space like what I'm in right now, you might wanna get yourself one of these ribbon microphones like what I have right here. The third pitfall you might run into in the audio side of things is just adding way too much reverb to your recordings. Yes, it's true that including some reverb on a very dry recording can make it more aesthetically pleasing, but adding too much of it gives us the same problem we just ran into when recording in a very live hall or putting the microphone too far away is we just don't have any clarity with the recording and it sounds almost as if you're trying to cover things up with too much reverb. Here's what that might sound like. And the final pitfall on the audio side of things may be that you just forget to cut out some distracting noises. Distracting noises such as clearing your throat before you start. <clears throat> or maybe you've identified yourself on the recording before you played. Hi, my name is Ryan Beach, and this is my submission for this audition. Or maybe you messed up the beginning of an excerpt and you decided to restart everything. And finally, maybe you were so frustrated with your particular recording that you maybe made a mistake and actually swore on the recording and then forgot to cut all of that out. So those are the 11 pitfalls that you might run into in a trumpet, a music, or an audio related category. We're gonna jump over to a conversation I had on my podcast with Ryan and Kevin about professional pitfalls that uh, applicants might fall into that can really affect the way that their tape is perceived. And uh, I felt this was an important thing to include in here, but that it was difficult for me to demonstrate some of these things. So I thought we could just hear it straight from them. This final part of it, Kevin was mentioning about uh, professionalism and that was one of the categories you guys gave. And 
this is one thing I was interested just to hear right from right from you guys because I didn't know how I would demonstrate any of these things in a video, right? So it would just be easiest if we you wrote three things here. Quality control checks by multiple professionals. That's something Kevin just mentioned. Follow audition instructions, play exactly what's requested, and then submit on time. So again, I would like to take this from the perspective of how is it perceived when these things are not taken care of? Like, are people shooting themselves in the foot before anything is ever heard? And and how how easy is that to take care of? So I'll let whoever take it. Yeah, I think I think it is people shooting themselves in the foot. It's I mean, all of the military band audition instructions that I've ever seen have been incredibly clear. And I think that candidates should know that going into that, every every section, every trumpet section like gets together at least, I, I would say at least five or six people within the section, if not the whole section, they, they create this list. Um, and, and a lot of people have had their hands on the specific wording and where to cut. There's a lot that goes into preparing a list. And so when, when you take all that time to prepare a very clear list and then people don't do what you're asking for, then it's like, well, I don't know if, I don't know if this person would be right for the military. You know, I, we, we have advanced someone who has, has put false starts in, but I mean, someone who has said, my name is before every single clip, probably not. Although, I mean, good trumpet playing is good trumpet playing. You know, it's, it's, it, we're, we're, we're listening for a bigger picture, but it's just not going to help you. It's yeah. Ide- you identifying helps. yourself. That's basically just maintaining the integrity of, um, anonymity within the audition. So that has obviously nothing to do with trumpet playing, but it can, it can mess with the audition process in and of itself. But for example, just not playing the right excerpt, especially if you don't play enough of it. If you start an excerpt, in the middle, I, I can't. What, Kevin? What would be an example of like an excerpt that you've heard cut off before? You're okay. So if you're playing, say, British Eighth, and you stop at, you know, you do the basic opening excerpt, but the hard part is bump, da 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 da, you know. But you play the opening part, and it's great. But you stop it there, and I'm like, is, is he hiding a problem? Yeah. Like I, I don't know. I mean, like, can can like a, a bunch of Fs on the top of the staff? That's really telling. But it's obviously not the main excerpt and maybe we haven't asked for the whole lecture before but so basically something like that has hasn't helped someone it, it won't i mean usually it hurts sometimes if the opening part is so good and which okay it's a check mark for us but it it doesn't help yeah. Yeah. you don't so the the simplest way i can put it is don't give the panel any reason to question what you're doing Yes. Don't, don't, don't give them any kind of ammunition to cut you. If you do exactly what we ask and do it really well, you're going to pass. No problem. Yeah. And, and if there's a hundred and some odd tapes and, and, you know, like we have like 40 of them that are, are really solid and they're doing everything that we've asked. It's going to be pretty hard to advance you when you haven't. No, when there are other candidates sense. that are more it's... deserving. I just, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to really try to share this information because I I believe it's important. And I believe the more information that's out there like this, everybody benefits from it and better tapes get sent in and you get better candidates. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I think it benefits everybody all around to have this information and to be able to to benefit from it. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for having us. I I think it's a, this, this is probably like one of the more useful things that, that we have collaborated on, Brian and I. Um, yeah, th- thank you so much for having us. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. This is this is the podcast for musicians, <laughs> in my uh, opinion. All right, I think that just about wraps up this video. I want to thank Ryan Brewer and Kevin Paul for sharing with us some of these pitfalls so that we can all learn and we can all make better tapes and we can all represent ourselves to the way that we need to so that we can have our best chance to advance in these auditions. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a like down below and don't forget to subscribe as well so you can see more content that's produced on this channel. Thanks so much for watching the video. Always remember, stay strong, be kind to yourself, Never stop growing, and we'll see you in the next video.